I think this may be my one and only gravel bikepacking experience. Because <laughs> I'm broken already. Make sure I charge my Garmin. Make sure I've charged my lights. Make sure we get those bars in 10 miles and I'll be more than starving. Nothing compared to the thrill. Underprepared for the hills. I used to get wheels on air. Now I put air in my wheels, change that tune Train and cruise, chain's been lewd Pace and move, Strava stats give man a heart attack But then my pace improves yes. Bars and cadence are strong Now my legs up, my cadence are long It's about time we do this It's the cycling tattooist What is up guys? If you're new here, then welcome to the channel And if you're regular, then welcome back Now before making this video I'll admit I was quietly confident About taking on this challenge I mean, it's only gravel riding, how hard can it be? Little did I know that I was setting out on what would become one of my hardest challenges to date. So we had got the train from Lisbon city centre to a town called Entrecamento where we would start our epic 375 kilometre journey. Now I knew this wasn't going to be easy but there was literally no time wasted when it came to this challenge. So we're only 10 kilometers in and we're already on our first hiker bike section. <laughs> oh, all part of the fun, eh? Oh. So we've got 147 kilometers to do today and well at this pace it's gonna take a bloody long time. I don't mind, I'm just happy to be out here exploring. I'm doing 350 watts <laughs> and I'm going nowhere. No one told me this gravel riding was so difficult. <laughs> oh no, are we going up oh, there? Yes. No, oh. no, 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 no. No? No. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Don't do that to me, David. <laughs> oh. It was around 40 kilometers in and we had just stopped at a local little cafe. We had absolutely stuffed our faces with a load of typical Portuguese snacks. And even though we was only 40 kilometers in, I was already getting a feeling that I may be slightly out of my depth. This definitely wasn't gonna be easy. This is interesting. It's adventure time. <laughs> We're not even on a path now. <laughs> yeah, we couldn't find the route, so we decided to just make our own one up. This <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's the path. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think that's safe to say that wasn't gravel. <laughs> that first day, I felt that I was learning a lot and fast and the route was definitely challenging to say the least. Sometimes I was even doubting whether maybe mountain bikes may have been more suited to this. But I guess maybe being a little ill-equipped in many ways just added to that feeling of adventure. Ha <laughs> ha 
you were a regular and welcome back. Ah. <laughs> so we're approaching 90k now and I'm not going to lie, I'm suffering already. <laughs> Who expected this gravel riding to be so difficult? It's certainly a lot tougher than riding on the road, that's for sure. But I'm going to keep pushing on. I'm not complaining. I'm having a great time. I'm just not used to it. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely harder than it looks. Ah, glorious tarmac. <laughs> oh, how I've missed you. We've got around 50 kilometers or so left to do today. And I'm pretty sure we're not gonna make it to our end destination before dark. But that's just, uh, <laughs> that's a classic, isn't it? <laughs> but anyways, the plan is that one of David's friends, he's riding in the opposite direction and he's gonna meet us somewhere halfway. And then we're gonna ride back with him and we're actually staying at his house. So yeah. Very nice of him to put us up for the evening. Is he going the wrong way? Huh. I don't mind having a little rest for a minute. <laughs> I would ride back and see if Elder's all right, but I don't think I've got the energy. <laughs> oh. I'm actually suffering quite a bit. <laughs> I was playing it down in front of the guys because I don't want them to know that I'm weak. <laughs> but I'm definitely feeling a little bit like I've bitten off more than I can chew. Uh, but what can you do, you know? Just got to keep pushing those pedals and eventually you'll be at the end. But who knows what state I'll be in at the end. Hopefully <laughs> I'm going to be able to continue tomorrow. <laughs> oh. Whose bloody stupid idea was this? <laughs> Could have just done the festive 500 on the road, nice and easy, but no. Had to uh, be Billy Big <laughs> didn't I? <laughs> oh well, on we go. Let's do this. We're just approaching the top of what is pretty much the last big climber today, which is music to my ears. Apparently there's a really nice descent coming up, so I'm looking forward to that. And then I think we're gonna stop for a cheeky coffee because, uh, well, me and Helda both can't feel our fingers or toes, so I think we need to warm up. Left behind. <laughs> yeah, we left them behind a long time ago, but still not complaining having a great time just uh, looking forward to the finish now <laughs> uh, well the finish for today anyway we've got a lot more kilometers left to do <laughs> over the next few days but not before we eat some lovely lasagna <laughs> apparently that's what we've got for dinner tonight I'm really looking forward to that <laughs> it's gonna taste good after 140 K that's for sure feeling quite disheartened at this point and things were already playing on my mind how could I be struggling this much on what was only day one? But I knew I just had to keep pushing on and remind myself why we do this. Now, on the reef, look to the left. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> look at that! That's one hell of a view, David. Mate, look at this. <laughs> this is unreal. Oh, f it hell. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't really like looking down there. That is very high. Look at that, though. <laughs> that is something else. What do you reckon, Helder? Marvelous. <laughs> Marvelous indeed. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so you know earlier when I said that was the last big climb of the day? <laughs> nope. 
It definitely wasn't. <laughs> and this one's off road as well, so. Oh my God. This climb is never ending. Oh. This is not ideal for 120 kilometers in. I'll tell you that. Ah. never stopped testing me and towards the end it became a bit of a battle but I wasn't willing to lose and I wasn't going to go down without a fight. Oh my god this climb is never ending I keep thinking I'm at the top and then sure enough I go around the corner and there's more oh the climb it just keeps giving oh, I feel I'm gonna be sick <coughs> oh. Oh. I think that's the top. Oh, don't want to speak too soon now. <sighs> oh my days. <coughs> These damn Portuguese guys trying to break me. <laughs> You've won, all right? <laughs> oh. Yeah. Do you need a job? No. <laughs> I need more than a gel. <laughs> Have you got a new set of legs in that bag? We wasn't far from Castella Branco, the finish for the day. I could already taste the lasagna, but then disaster struck. Whoa, hell. what the f Oh, oh no. Hello? None of us would have believed that the day was going to end like this and what an awful thing to have witnessed and for me it just brought back a lot of bad memories. After waiting for the emergency services to arrive we slowly crawled back and settled in for the night. What a physically and mentally draining day that was and I was just glad that the day was over. Yep, I'm walking. Never in my life have I had to walk up a hill until today. This gravel riding ain't easy, I tell you. I was just saying to David, I think this may be my one and only gravel bikepacking experience. Because <laughs> I'm broken already. And it's only day two. Why do we do it? I think from now on, if I do gravel, it's gonna be 50K tops with no bags on the bike, that's for sure. Then it'll be fun. But <laughs> this is just pure suffering. So today's ride is a little bit shorter than yesterday's ride, but that doesn't mean it's gonna be any easier because there is a hell of a lot of climbing to do today. We've already done quite a lot and we're actually currently at 856 meters above sea level which is quite high obviously but would you believe it we're going even higher today the air is going to be thin up there let's just hope we survive
walking again. <laughs> These boys are too good at this for me. I can't keep up. As much as that pains me to admit that, I'm just uh, underqualified. Okay? Just enjoying the view. <laughs> well, Beautiful. <laughs> one thing I do want to say is though, don't let any of my whinging put you off of doing something like this because oh, as tough as it is, it is so, so amazing as well. Just being out in the middle of nature, no one around but you and your friends, it's, there's something quite magical about it. So yeah, go embrace the suck as they say and go get after it. We all know what goes up must come down and some of these descents were super fun. Speeding through the forest on a misty day, there is definitely something cool about that. And once we got down to the town, it was time to eat again. After all, these kind of rides, we know, they are just as much an eating competition. But we didn't stop for long, it was straight back out on the road. So we are now 58 kilometers into day two. And uh, I'm feeling a bit better now after a well-deserved lunch. We absolutely stuffed our faces. And well, why not? When you're doing stuff like this, that's all part of it. You gotta load up on as many calories as you can. The only problem is when you stop and you sit in a nice warm calf, you do feel the cold when you start again. But we'll soon warm up. As I said earlier, we've got a lot of climbing to do today. So that's where we're headed now. We're headed for another very big climb. But I'll tell you more about that in a minute, once I'm not freezing. So earlier when I said today was going to be challenging, I wasn't lying. It's, uh, it's been very tough already, but it's about to get even tougher. We're currently at 700 meters above sea level, but we're going up, way up. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's not going to be easy. Ever since I moved to Portugal, I've had nothing but suggestions from people on things that I should do and absolute top of the list that I've had the most suggestions for is to take on the famous Serra de Estrella and that is exactly what we're doing today. Serra de Estrella is the highest peak in the whole of mainland Portugal, topping out at a hefty 1,993 metres. In fact, it is so high that around this time of year, the whole area would usually be covered in snow. Even though we was very lucky that there wasn't any this year, it was still very cold up there and at times the vision was very poor due to some serious fog. Oh. All right, I know you probably can't see me, but this is the top. There's not a lot to see. Oh, oh I haven't suffered like that up a climb in a long time. The guys are just coming now. Uh, David gave me a little push towards the end there and then uh, dropped back for Helder. Uh, so he's back there somewhere. I'm absolutely exhausted. Oh, that was tough. We did it. Now I didn't film any of the descent because at this point just merely getting down in one piece was our main priority. Which eventually we did and we arrived at a town called Saya where we was going to be staying in a hotel for the night for some very needed and well deserved rest.
The next day we was finally greeted with some blue skies. We had treated ourselves to a lie-in. We absolutely smashed the hotel breakfast and then we set ourselves off on the third leg of our journey. This day on paper was set out to be the easiest at around 100 kilometers, but with 275 kilometers already in the legs, this wasn't gonna be easy. take long for me to start struggling and it was only 20 kilometers in when we came across our first obstacle of the day. I really had to resist the urge to just plow straight through but I wasn't willing to risk getting soaked this early in the ride. I opted to gingerly walk across instead. <laughs> well at this rate i'm gonna have to change the name of the channel to the walking tattooist <laughs> becoming a regular occurrence ah oh, my knees are blown to bits any sort of steep incline it's just too much. To be honest, even walking's hurting it. But it's the lesser of two evils. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. I'm not enjoying this much. <laughs> it's uh, the only time I'm really enjoying it is when I stop and take in the view. But any time I'm actually riding, <sighs> yeah, not having fun. stretch of the legs we rolled on through more challenging and difficult terrain there was never a dull moment but I guess that's all part of the gravel charm not knowing what's around the next corner so today is day three of our epic adventure and it's gonna be our last day as well it's uh certainly been a bit of baptism by fire let's put it that way another thing that today will mark the end of is the festive 500 after today's ride i will have completed the festive 500 challenge for another year and that'll make it four years in a row that i've done it it's uh it's always a bit bittersweet because it is never easy doesn't matter how you try and tackle this task. It just really isn't easy at all. For anyone out there that's managed to complete it, hats off to you. It's, uh, yeah, it's not for the faint hearted. <laughs> Anyways, I best not count my chickens before they hatch, as they say. I got, I keep cracking on. We've got about 50K or so left to do today. But uh, first things first, let's get some lunch. I am starving. After lunch, 
it was the final push to the finish and we was blessed with some absolutely beautiful bike paths that were gonna pretty much take us all the way to the end. This was definitely a highlight of the trip for me. Absolutely stunning scenery, but more importantly, I knew soon it was all gonna be over. All right, that's it. I've completed the festive 500. I'm ending my ride here. <laughs> bye, Tom. Bye, bye. bye. <laughs> no, unfortunately I'm not. <laughs> We've only got 25k left to go. Oh, this lovely cycle path that we're on has definitely picked up my spirit, so it's uh, just what I needed at the end of this absolutely painful experience. <laughs> Look at this place. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Now, I know there has been a lot of complaining in this video, but I've had time to properly process this incredible ride now and it is definitely up there with one of the hardest things I have ever done on the bike. And I stand by what I've said. I hated it. It was brutal. But when you do rides like this, it isn't until after that you truly learn to appreciate it. We managed to push through and succeed in our mission. And when you get to that finish line, there really isn't any other feeling quite like it. So as I said earlier, please do not let my whining put you off. Get out there and go plan your own adventure. Go embrace the struggle. And believe me, you are gonna have some incredible stories to tell. I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. Thanks very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.